Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Keep It Techie, the channel where we keep it simple, keep it fun, and most importantly, keep it techie. I'm your host, Josh, and if you've been rolling with me for a while, you know we love exploring Linux and helping folks get into the tech world. And today we're diving into something fresh for all you Orch enthusiasts, or maybe even those who've been eyeing Orch, but were a little nervous or hesitant about the setup. With that being said, I want to introduce you guys to the latest version of the Orch installer, which is 3.0. And this is a menu based installer that's taken the Orch Linux experience to a whole new level. And this latest version is packed with updates, including a revamped interface that makes it easier than ever to get your Orch system up and running. And if you've ever been curious about Orch or just want to stay in a loop with the latest tools and features, this video is for you. So let's break it all down. And by the end, you might even be ready to install Orch yourself. So grab a coffee, relax, and let's jump in. All right, check this out. So I'm at the Orch install GitHub page. This is where that project is housed. So you can check it out for yourself. I'll put the link down in the description of the video, but the current release is 3.0.1, which has all the updates that I want to cover for you guys. But currently it's not in the latest release of Orch Linux or the latest ISO. So if you download it, it won't have this latest release in there, but they're pretty close to getting it out there in the, in the ISO. But I'll show you guys a workaround once I get to the demonstration that I wanna show you guys. So you can play around with the 3.0 version within the current release of Orch Linux. So if you look right here, you see, it says build Orch ISO with Orch install commit release 3.0.1. So like I said, that's what, that was done two days ago. So they're pretty close to adding it to an ISO. I just wanted to show you guys that, but this is where you can get all the information about the Orch install script that they add in there to the ISO. But just to cover a little more, first off, if you've used the earlier versions of the Orch install, you'll notice the differences right away as soon as you check out this newest one. Because this isn't just a small update, it's a major overhaul. Like I played around with it a couple times, just seeing if I could break it while doing the install, just running through and installing it different ways. It's basically a major overhaul, like I said. The installer now uses a revamped text-based user interface built with the Curses terminal control library. And you're probably wondering, what does that mean for you? It's basically a cleaner, more intuitive experience. Instead of jumping between pages and menus like before, you now get side panels that make navigation smoother. It's almost like the installer is saying, don't worry, I got you. And that's not all. Here are a few of the highlights that I wanted to talk about. And that's the improved support for mirror list speed tests because waiting on slow mirrors is not fun. There's also a new feature to explicitly erase partitions, and that's perfect for those focused on security. Now, also there is better local mirror selection, which is a huge win for faster package downloads. And also updates to profiles like i3 window manager, making configurations easier than before. There's also some fancy developer stuff like rough linting support, and improve code quality. But for us end users, it's really about the smoother experience. In short, the Orch Install 3.0 is all about making Orch more accessible while keeping that minimalist, no bloat philosophy we all know and love. It's like Orch Linux is holding out a hand to newcomers and saying, come join the cool kids club. So now that we got a clear understanding of all the updates with this latest version, let me go down and show you guys a demonstration of how it works. And I'll also show you guys how to go down and get that latest version of the installer within the latest ISO release that's out there right now until they update the ISOs. So let's get to it. Hey y'all, Josh here from Keep It Techie. Real quick, let's talk about Rocky Linux. This distro is the real deal if you're looking for a solid enterprise ready Linux solution. It all started after Red Hat dropped CentOS and Gregory Kurtzer, the OG co-founder of CentOS, 
brought us Rocky Lennox as a tribute to his late friend, Rocky McGough. This is community-driven, open-source software at its finest, and it's already making waves. Rocky Lennox 8.10 is out now, giving you that enterprise-grade stability without all the Red Hat licensing headaches. So whether you're running a home lab or a full-on data center, Rocky's got your back. So if you want to keep it open source and keep your data secure, check out Rocky Linux. The link's down in the description of the video. It's built by the community, for the community, and it's here to stay. Stay techy, y'all. All right, so I'm logged into my fresh virtual machine that I'll install Arch Linux on. And so we're booted up into the IS. And let me show you guys how to get around it right fast. I'm gonna show you guys first what's installed on the ISO. And this is a ISO I downloaded today directly from the Arch repository. I believe I got it off the Arizona EDU repository that's out there because that's the closest to me right here on the West Coast. Set that university in Arizona. So I just downloaded it from there. But let me get the screen a little right so you guys can see a little better. All right, cool. So let's find out exactly what's on here so if we type pacman because you could type the pacman command and you can see what's actually on the iso which is basically the booted up operating system that we're running right now that will install the operating system on the hard drive and, and this is all running in memory so we could type pacman and then dash capital q and i the way i remember these commands is simple basically what i'm doing is querying the installed applications on the operating system. So Q is for query and I is for installed. And what we want to check is the version of install Arch install. So let's go on press enter. That'll give us the current version of the Arch install application we have on here. And if you guys look at it, that's the 2.8.6-1 version. That's not the one we want. We want the latest version, which is at 3.0. So let me clear the screen, get it back up to the top so you guys can see again. And all we have to do to install it, we can type Pacman, then dash capital S and then Y, and then we can Arch install and press enter. And this will grab it and download it and install the latest version for us. So like I said, this is a workaround in order for you to get that latest version. And as you can see right there, Arch install 3.0.1 dash one dash any that is the latest version as well as its dependency that it needs it installed that on here for you guys so you can run that latest version now you can go through the install just like you would any other time you have in the past so let's clear again and let's run the arch install i'm gonna tap it out and this is that newer version so like i said if you want to run through it and play around with it i'll just kind of go through it quickly so you guys can kind of see because I've shown people how to do this in the past, you'll see the differences, you know, right off once we start going into it. So the Arch Linux language, we're going to roll with English because, you know, I'm in the U.S., but you'll see the differences. You see the menu pops up on the right. We can go in there and change our locales. I'm not going to go in there because it's all set, but our mirrors, we can click in there. We can select our mirror region if you want to, custom regions. As you can see, this is super cool and super simple. And all you got to do is go down and find it and we can go back up because I know mine's at the bottom. Hit the space bar to select it and we're good to go. And then we can go back. Boom. Good to go. And I automatically put the mirrors in there for us and we can go back. So we're good. United States. Disk configuration. Partitioning. I use the best effort. Default partition layout. You can do that. You can do your manual partitioning. I'm going to just click that select our drive press enter uh, you can do butter better fs xt4 xfs you know the same options you have it's just a little bit cleaner i'm gonna just use a uh, ext4 that's fine and then you can also do lvm if you want to but i'm gonna just leave it that way that's fine yeah we already did this but you could change it you can go back in there and change it but that's we have it set the way we want to this encryption we're gonna do swap we're gonna enable swap that's fine bootloader grub it's already set to that a unified kernel image we're not gonna mess with that host name Arch Linux that's fine uh root password we can set that it's not gonna show it and type it in twice boom user account this is where you can set your user account so just set a username I'm gonna just give it Josh set our password as you can see this is a whole lot cleaner I really like this and yes we want to give this super user you can add more users through here confirm and exit boom profiles so like I said I showed you guys this 
not gonna play around with it. Let's just do a quick desktop. You can make it minimal server. I'm gonna do desktop. Since I'm just doing it simple, I'm gonna just do XFCE because I love F XFCE graphics drivers. You can go in here and mess with that if you want to. Uh, you can go in here and add other profiles. Well, it's gonna install all those packages. You can add other open source packages if you need them. The greeter is showing you everything it's gonna install. I don't need any audio because this machine doesn't have any audio attached to it, this virtual machine. Let's see, kernel, Linux, that's fine. Network configuration, you definitely wanna set this up. So copy ISO network configuration to installation, that's fine, because we have it on uh, the ISO. Uh, it automatically connects. Or you can use network manager, but you might have to configure certain things to get it working. But uh, the easiest way is just copy the ISO if you wanna add some. Optional repositories, you can enable certain repositories, multi-lib or testing, UTC, that's fine. I'm gonna just put time zone UTC. NTP is enabled and we're going to install. Boom, and that's cool. It shows the whole configuration for what it's gonna do. And essentially what it is, is a script and it's gonna take everything that you put within here to run the script and do all the configurations for you or the install for you based on the settings that you put in that script the variable, so to speak. And so we can press yes, boom. It'll go through, you know, formatted drives and all that stuff. And I won't sit around and wait for this. This, this, you, you guys seen this. I just wanted to mainly focus in on the new install. You know what I'm saying? And what it looks like. Okay, so what are my thoughts? Y'all know Orange Linux has always had this reputation for being, let's say, exclusive. People love to flex their Orch installs like a badge of honor. I use Orch, by the way, you know, right? And don't get me wrong, I respect the grind. You know, I even use Orch. I've installed it the Orch way, so to speak. But let's be honest, not everyone has the time or patience to go through the traditional Orch installation process. That's why I think Orch install, you know, 3.0 is such a game changer. It lowers the barrier of entry without dumbing things down. You still have to make choices, your file system, your desktop environment, your partitions, but it's presented in a way that feels approachable. It's like training wheels for Orch, but you're still riding the bike yourself. Now, the revamped interface, I'm all about it. Having these settings pop up in side panels instead of full page menus is a small change that makes a huge difference. It's like the dev said, let's streamline this without losing the Orch vibe. And to me, they nailed it. This doesn't mean Orch install is perfect. It's still very much a tool for people who want control. If you're coming from something like Ubuntu or Fedora, you might still find the process intimidating, but that's okay. The beauty of Linux is that there's something for everyone. For me, the Orch install 3.0 feels like the perfect balance between keeping it user-friendly and staying true to what makes Orch special. If you've been on the fence about trying Orch, now's the time to dive in. All right, so that wraps up. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the Orch Linux installer 3.0. And I hope this also gave you a good sense of what's new and why it's worth checking out. So whether you're a seasoned Orch user or just thinking about taking your first steps into the world of Orch Linux, this updated installer is definitely worth a try. And hey, if you do decide to give it a shot, let me know how it goes in the comments. Did the new interface make things easier or, or are you still rocking that traditional manual install? I wanna hear your thoughts. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel for more Linux tips, tricks, and deep dives. And remember, the goal here is to keep learning and growing in tech one step at a time. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because, yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.